Hello everyone. Welcome to the Females in Motorsport podcast. Today we're sitting down with F1 Academy champion Martha Garcia. Hi Martha, how are you doing? Hi, thank you for having me. Um really good. Thanks. Really good. Obviously, it's been a few days uh since uh since I won the championship, you know. I'm still over the moon, you know, a lot of support, a lot of texts from from people, you know, uh saying congrats. Uh but really good. Really good, honestly. Has it set in that you are the champion? Yeah, I think so now, of course. Uh, at first, when I was, you know, crossing the line and everything, the first day was like a lot of things and I didn't really like see it properly. Uh, but now, yeah, of course, uh, you know, it's, uh, I came back actually yesterday. I arrived yesterday in the, in the night to my house. So now, yeah, it's, it's, it's settled in. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a chance to celebrate? Uh, not really. I mean, of course, I did celebrate in Austin because uh, we obviously did something on Sunday in Austin uh, at the city. Uh, so I think that's that's where I celebrated. Uh, but yeah, now I'm going also somewhere this week um, already from racing. Um, cannot say much, uh, but it's good. So so yeah, um, haven't got time, like a lot of time to celebrate, but I think like we did in Austin. And obviously spending some time chilling as well is good. You know, like I, I think I needed this as well. Yeah, absolutely. You needed some time to just let it absorb, spend some time with your family, all of that. So you obviously won the championship during race one of the weekend. It was already wrapped up. When you crossed the finish line, what was your first thought that crossed your mind? I mean, uh, when I crossed the finish line, I was like, still not believing it or like I didn't think about it properly uh, but then you know when I was doing the lap through like uh, the lap and then I got into the pit lane I was then thinking like oh my god like we did it finally like we won the championship like after all of the races like seven races well seven events 21 races you know it's been a long way um we've worked so hard with uh with Prema with the engineers in the same on and off track also my family all the support that we all the all the support and all of the sacrifice that we have to do also with with money and everything you know um just seeing the result it's it's great and it feels amazing to to have won the the championship of f1 academy yeah you've had a really incredible season right from race one you've been dominant the entire time At any point, did you expect to win the championship? Did you think, okay, this is well within my reach? Yeah, of course. Um, During the season, obviously, first of all, when I started the season, you know, when I I knew I was going to race with Prema because actually I was the the last one on getting announced, which is funny enough. Um, I was, uh, I thought I could win the the championship if I did a good job and I knew I was with, with probably the best team. Um, but yeah, obviously you never know, like anything can happen or you have like some good competitors, but mm-hmm. I have faith in myself. Uh, and then I, th- I think after the first race, when I won two races, I was on pole, you know, after Valencia, where I was also on pole and then won a race and so on, you know, the team and I were like, okay, we want to win. Uh, we're doing well. Um, uh, we have five races left you know let's go race by race but we need to do a good job we need to be Mm -hmm. constant um so I was always kind of thinking about wanting to win but not not like the championship mostly like wanting to do well in every race and of course the wrestlers will come after yeah so I know a lot of people have been following your career since W Series and W Series also you were a race winner, but you were more in like the top of the midfield versus in F1 Academy, you have been the front runner from the beginning. Did you specifically make any changes to your routine or any improvements that you think helped propel your success in F1 Academy compared to W Series? Well, I think um, mostly, um, obviously, when I started racing, it was 2017. So by the time I got into the W Series, my first year, I was fourth, which was okay. Uh, But then I had a really bad year in 2021. Like mentally, I was not in the place, you know, like struggled a lot. And I think last year, 2022, is when I tried to come back a bit, you know. I was working with a psychologist and everything. And also, I learned a lot last year in in W Series uh, with some of the engineers. 
And I started like kind of understanding how to drive properly a single seater, how the weight transfer works and everything. Because if you don't know this, really, you're not, you're not, you're going anywhere. So I think what's changed basically from these years to, to this year, it's, um, the experience that I have, obviously, in single seaters, the way of understanding how the car works, and uh, and mentally, you know, like at the end of the day, I think I was one of the of the of the most strong uh, out there mentally, because uh, I had a really bad year, as I said, and I think mentally I was really strong, and now I can handle um, stress and some other situations quite different that before maybe I, I wouldn't. So I think this is basically everything that's changed from from one season to the other one. Yeah, I'm glad you touched on the mental side because, you know, being in the F1 Academy paddock this past weekend, I could see that while all of you are, um, you know, trying your level best, of course, there is a mental side to being in such a competitive series. You know, it's not like some series like Formula One where you know someone is just miles ahead of you i think f1 academy is very very competitive so i know you have to keep your stress in control and like everything just keep your center um so i guess my question is for this past year is there anything that you you think that you would have advice for other young drivers to keep your mental health strong I mean, obviously, um, for me, it was not just the racing. It was also really a lot on personal stuff. Like, I don't want to go too much deep, but like, I'm really hypochondriac as well. And, you know, when you start to get anxiety, then you get really weird feelings and then you stress out and everything is like a mess. Uh, But if I say like from the racing side, I would say try to keep it uh, simple, like try to chill, you know, like even when you start racing, like don't try to don't expect yourself to be on the top on from from day one like you've got to work uh you need to be patient like things are not going to come like this like it's a long way um and you gotta work hard but don't stress yourself too much like um obviously just take it easy i would say take it easy like um if it's not working it will work out at some point or if it doesn't work out okay it's not the end of the world let's say uh, so just take things more easy and uh, and chill. Like at the end of the day, that's yeah. what, that's all I can say. <laughs> I think that's really good advice, actually, because I mean, all of you are so young. There's so much for you to achieve right now, and I think that's really good advice because you know when you're when you're in the car, I'm sure it can get very stressful because you obviously want to be the best, but um, there are so many other factors at play. So just to keep your center and just to chill. I love that, you know, just chill sometimes. It's okay. Things will come to you and uh, the hard work will pay off. Mm. Um, Speaking a little bit of W Series, since you have had the opportunity to drive in both series and a lot of people make comparisons between the two, as a driver and as someone who has experienced both of them, do you think F1 Academy will likely be more successful than W Series? (laughs) Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I mean, I think, uh, I think, uh, I think it's different. I think at the end of the day, obviously I'm not going to lie. Like W series, of course, um, made, um, made a bit of, um, visibility for women in motorsport at first. Yeah. Like, um, I think they, they, it helped, you know, to bring, uh, more things like F1 Academy. Uh, but I think F1 Academy was giving us basically it's, it's, it's different. Like, obviously it's part of F1 um we're well this time for me like i'm not gonna race next year f1 academy but 10 teams are gonna be uh having a livery uh in, on 10 drivers for next year which is gonna be amazing um mm-hmm. they're gonna be shown on tv broadcasting uh you know there's gonna be a lot of visibility so that's like really good for us uh for for the young girls and also in terms of uh, track time, we get a lot of track time, which we didn't really do in, in the other championship. So track time is one of the most important things, um, doing it properly, of course, but having track time is, is it's, uh, it's one of the most important things, as I said, because you need it. You need it. And mostly when you're really young and then you need to, you, you don't, you don't understand how to drive uh, mm. this or the techniques and everything. So you need to uh, go on the track and try it and then, and then you know you 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 get this uh but i think yeah also working with teams like um 
junior single seater teams like Prema, you know, my team, and some of the other teams that are in F1 Academy. It's great also because they have experience. Um, they show you a lot. You know, I learned this year a lot also with the team. And I think uh, it's basically the approach is, is really different. I think uh, the approach of F1 Academy is going in the right way. And they mm. also have not just the Fun Academy, but also some other programs like Discover Your Drive or Champions of the Future linked, um, you know, like they are linked with Champions of the Future. So I think everything is going in the right way, you know, like this uh, as a progression path. So I think, as I said, it's really different. And I think uh, this is this is going to work. Yeah, that's amazing. I had the opportunity to be at a panel with Susie Wolf during the the weekend. And that's exactly what she said. She said, if if this doesn't work, then nothing will. And I think there is a very strong sense of vision and mission for F1 Academy, which is really great to see. Um, so now, as I was saying, I had the opportunity to be with you guys in, in the F1 Academy paddock this weekend. And I noticed something really amazing that many of you have a very <laughs> amazing sense of camaraderie and friendship. I could see all of you just enjoying watching the race sometimes together, like the Formula One races. Um, and is there from your perspective a real sense of um friendship in the paddock like do you do you feel like you know yeah we're all kind of in it together even though you're all obviously competing against each other i mean yeah of course um you know when you're on the track like no one's your friend like we always say obviously we're racers so we're competitors so uh we always we all want to win so no one's our friend uh, but outside of the track, I have to say, like, at least for me, I can say with my teammates, it's been great, you know, with Bianca and Chloe this year. Um, we had a really, really um, nice relationship um, outside of the track. Like, at the end of the day, we were on the sim together in Prema in Italy. We spent nights together also in Italy, you know, in the same hotel. Uh, also, days where we got free time, so we, we had to just spend time together and maybe go shopping or go here or go there. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, we made a really good, uh, nice uh, relation and mm -hmm. um, and it was it was great also in terms of working after on track, you know, uh, we also helped each other. Like at the end of the day, obviously, I was the one with more experience on the team. So I would probably <laughs> speak to Chloe because she's like 16 mm -hmm. years old. She's like first year of single seater. So I would tell her like my experience, you know. And then she would be like more chill because sometimes she would get more stressed about why am I not fast or what, what is happening? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, getting stressed. So you need to also tell them. Uh, but yeah, I think we, we, we have a really good relation uh, outside of the track and also with the other girls. Like, obviously, I don't think there's problems between us. Like, obviously, you get along with ones more than the other ones. Um, but I've, you might have seen also on the paddock in Austin, like you see all of us talk to each other, like quite nice. So. I think it's quite cool also, like we, we get along, all of us. I love that. I love it because I think so many people expect that drivers can't be real good friends with each other. And that is something I really did notice in the paddock that you would all just hang out together, eat together, you know, just have a good time, just be laughing together. And I think that was really unique. I have personally not seen so much camaraderie before. I have not been in many paddocks, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I really liked seeing that. It was really, it was really cool. Um, so what is next for you now? What are you looking forward to? Well, um, what's next, of course, uh, one chapter ends, another one comes. Um, obviously, F1 Academy is going to help me to go to a higher category. Like, this is what they want, you know. They want uh, the winner to to obviously, after all the work, the serves to, to get to a higher category. Um, I'm excited for you, whatever is going to come next year. You absolutely deserve it. You had an amazing season, um, really dominant from the moment you got into that car. And I think everyone truly can't wait to see the amazing things that you're going to, I'm sure, bring. Um, before we wrap, we do something called a very fun rapid fire round where I ask you three very random questions um, about racing, sometimes not about racing, and you just have to answer whatever comes to your mind first. All right. All right. Let's are you ready? It. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. First question would be, is there a driver who you personally look up to? Who I look up to? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Lewis, of course, Lewis Hamilton. 
And I would say also, um, since I was, when I was really young, Fernando Alonso. Mm. I know you had an opportunity to meet Luis this past weekend in the paddock. How was that? It was amazing, you know. Uh, of course, like, uh, it, it was great. Like, he was waiting for me to congratulate me after the race, you know, after the championship win also. So just, uh, like, you know, having Lewis there, having Lewis Hamilton, just waiting for you to congratulate you, you know, what that must feel like. It's obviously great. Like, I was, I've was, i been looking up for him for a lot of years, and I, adm- I admire him a lot as a driver and also outside of the track. So it was just, just really good, really nice from him to come and say congrats. Yeah, that's amazing. I know he was also in the paddock. He did the rounds and he went to every garage. And it yeah. looks like he's very invested in learning more about the series, which is amazing. Um, all right, question number two. I mean, you had so many wins this year, but which one was your favorite? I think Austin, of course. Like, we're not mm-hmm. going to lie. I think it's been the best out of out of them. Um, obviously, there was a lot of crowd. It was with the F1. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of visibility. I think it was amazing. You know, like, just the, the environment was, was just so different to the other races. And also because I, I won the first race and I won the championship, I think that was, like, let's say my highlight of the year. Yeah. Amazing. And last question is non-racing related. I'm curious, what is your favorite off-track activity? Off-track activity? Uh, well, actually, I enjoy doing sports. Mm-hmm. As in, I like to go to the gym, you know, mm-hmm. like the sports. Like it, it kind of like stress me, yeah, not stress me out, sorry, like de- <laughs> stresses me out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But also I like uh, when I have free time, I also like to 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 chill with friends, mm. uh, you know, so I, I'm not spending a lot of time here because I'm mm. traveling a lot. So it's good when I when I'm home and I'm spending some time with my best friends, um, you know, like just having a nice time together, go for dinner, go for lunch. Uh, this is what I like to do. So when I'm around. Yeah. Amazing. Just to chill, basically. Exactly. Chill and have fun. That's yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Marta, for joining me on this quick chat. It has been such a pleasure being able to see your journey this past year and even over the past few years. I mean, the season was amazing for you and I'm literally just waiting at the edge of my seat to see what's coming next. Um, And congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course.